Pink Hey Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So we will start the year of 2022 with a 7 nights 1 tier list video. I wanted to start the year with this overview of what has happened over the past year and of course I hope to have a great start in the 7 nights franchise from 2022 onwards as well. And most definitely happy new year to you guys. So we are first going to start off with the PvP side. There's a huge amount of changes as you can see right here. Okay, it has been dramatically changed and also one thing that stands out is that the tank team I have completely removed it. I think it is no longer relevant in today's PvP context at all. Okay, so we are first going to jump right into the offensive team. As you can see in October, the offensive team comprised of mainly these units, these 8 units, okay? They were pretty rigid for the offensive team I would say, okay? It's been a long time since we had a very flexible offensive team but now, the offensive team is incredibly varied. I mean, I was shocked myself when I was preparing to make this video. So. Something new for this part of the tier list is that I will talk about the teams instead because I'm sure most of you uh, who are still playing want to know the teams that the heroes are involved in instead of just knowing which heroes are in the SS tier. So for the offensive and magic teams, I will talk about the teams um, and then you see that the classification of the tiering has also changed. So what's in the SS tier is only uh, for teams that are used in the top three tiers, okay, and then whatever else is in the S tier and the bottom four are the A tier. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the first team that I've seen and that is the Dylan's, Chip, Gideon, Chris and Yon He team. Now this team is primarily used for death, okay, so it's more death offensive oriented. Yon He is particularly there, you know, you can use stun on her, you can use death on her, up to you, okay, both works. Chris has increased skill use chance with the initiate set and he also is able to reset his awakened skill so that's going to be very useful. Gideon is actually used as secondary counter because his fear is actually pretty good as well and Chip is mainly for his passive to prevent revive because as you know the meta has shifted in such a way that many heroes now have revive especially like Ace, Vanessa, they heal a lot. I mean they revive at very high HP and D as well. So Chip is here to counter all of that. And if you think about it, a few months ago Chip was not relevant. What is the major reason for this change? One of the biggest reasons is because of the shift back to the you go first uh, meta, right? So there's a higher chance that Chip can survive and there's also a higher chance you may be able to nuke some of the enemies right from the start. Especially with the death CC. So bringing along Chip will allow you to have a huge advantage over the enemy team. And I just realized this and I'm very disturbed by it. <laughs> so I hope you don't mind it. I will change it when I upload the new tier list. Okay, so yeah, so this is one route you can go. So, so for the bottom part, you can actually use this team whereby you use Dylan's, Chip, Fenrir, Jack, and Rudy. That also works. You can also go with Dylan's, Ace, Fenrir, Jack, and Rudy. I've seen that too. Ace particularly is super good. Okay, he is the new incomer for the offensive team and he has performed really really well and um, he is he can be used independent of Teo actually so Teo uh, not necessarily needs to be used okay but with Teo around uh, but with Ace around Teo actually becomes really good as well so you can also go this route from the bottom whereby you use Dylan's Ace, Teo, Jack and Rudy that works out as well so there are many many variations to the offensive team right now and I think this is quite an interesting twist in the PvP meta if you were to go about looking at the top few teams and maybe you guys want to try out these teams as well. Now Fenra has been in the meta for a very very long time uh, particularly right now because we have heroes that convert HP um, to uh, rather Bile she does HP swap so Fenra is there to counter that Okay, so Teo, as you can see, I've given him the... I've changed his stamp set. It is now the Storm and Ambush set, similar to Gideon. Okay, because the Ambush set actually gives him 30% accuracy rate increase. And if you realize from my videos, you realize that Teo always misses uh, when he hits Yon, he or when he hits Anti. So the ambush that actually comes in very handy in this case because the 30% accuracy rate increase will allow them to kill Antis and all Yonhees uh, much more efficiently. Okay, and Jack, I don't have to 
say he is such a strong DPS, so Blessing Set is going to be great for him. So basically this is currently the few varieties of very good offensive teams you can use. Okay, and when it comes to the S tier, we will realize that Fi has fallen, uh, Cult as well has fallen. Okay, um, Fi particularly has fallen because we have Bile, she can eliminate the highest attack hero. Usually, usually in the past, Fi is at the back, right? So Fi tends to be um, eliminated. Another reason is because I think the matches are going so fast right now, especially with all the Rudies that are casting, that are removing the shield so quickly that Fi does not have a chance to actually live that long to get into her uh, immortal state. That means she will die before the buff block can be removed. So that's why she is not used as much in the upper tiers. But if you were to use her in these tiers, I think it is still fine. And Cult, um, same thing, I think it's mainly because she is not really required. If you just give them good gear and very good polishing, second polishing and all that, I think you don't really need Cult because the damage output from the heroes themselves are huge already. Okay. And Anti fallen as well, Red Grid has fallen as well. Uh, these heroes are less seen in the offensive team now. The offensive team really mainly, mainly consists of all these heroes. Rudy is still very consistent there, giving the entire offensive team bulk. And with Ace having skill notification on his skills, Anti is less reliant okay, for the offensive team. Nothing much changed for the A tier, okay, these three heroes can still be used in the really low tiers, it's fine. Gelidus, you know, he's always there because of death resist, so, yep. Next up, we're moving to the magic team. The magic team has also expanded considerably, okay, the, the main core of the magic team still remains, as you can see here. It's Yonhi, Bio, and NT. But there are three variations of magic teams now, in the top tiers. That is the death magic team, which is Chris and Gideon, okay, they are the ones mainly casting death. And you have Yonhee as support as well. Yonhee also has death CC on her accessory. You also have the more standard, the um, bulky magic team, which is the one with Rudy and Gideon. Gideon will increase status cast rate as well, right? So Yonhee and Bio are gonna be really strong here. You also have this very new, fresh combination of Tio and Ace. So if you realize Tio and Ace, when they are paired together, they will also decrease defense of the enemies by 50%. I'm not sure if Kyo is supposed to be a secondary uh, debuffer to Bael because his passive and Bael's passive is technically the same. Okay, but Ace here, he does increase the damage the enemies take. And he also has additional skill nullification casted on his skills, right? His skill set is just really, really good. And I think that's one of the reasons why they do use both of them here. And uh, it's quite a fresh sight, to be honest, when I was preparing the video. So I had to include this to inform you guys about it. And for the S tier, we have two newcomers. That is Isabella and Aaron Rod. Isabella, I have tested her. I think she is a decent hero. She's not entirely useless um, if you get past turn 6 with her. Of course, the buff block has to be gone. But with Anti on your team, I think there's a pretty good chance that you may be able to cast the debuff immunity from her skills early on if Anti does cleanse properly. Okay, so that's one thing. Aaron Rod is a decent, I wouldn't say decent, I think it's a subpar. Um, alternative for Yonhee because she does have the buff block as well but Aaron Rod's problem is that she doesn't do as much damage as Yonhee because she only focuses on fixed damage so that's not the most efficient way of killing off enemies so hence she is going to be just in the S tier okay the S tier Rin has fallen okay Vanessa has fallen Judas has fallen these three, they were really really used a lot at one point. I mean, they are still used from time to time, but not as much in the top tier anymore, at least in the top 100 from what I've seen. Vanessa is still a very good hero, so some people do use her over Gideon. So you have a Yonhi, Bael, Anti, Vanessa, Rudy team. That works out fine as well. Yeah, overall, I think she is a great hero to have on the magic team still, but it's probably because death is still more efficient than actual damage. So I think she is not used as much because of that reason, okay? Another thing I want to point out is Rangrid. Rangrid is really a hero that borders between the SS tier and S tier. Sometimes she is used over Rudy um, for the debuff resistance, okay? 
and I think you may want to try that as well if you feel that Gideon's CC is really too much because Vanguard completely counters against Gideon's uh, status class rate increase. So that is one reason why she is sometimes used over Rudy, but your Rangrid has to be really decked out, otherwise she'll be, you know, gone too early, and then that will be completely useless. So for the A tier, I think nothing much has changed. The only thing is that I shifted Clemith down because I think stats-wise she is not comparable to all the other heroes, and she will die pretty fast currently in the meta. But that said, she can still be used in the lower tier for sure. Okay. Next on, we move to the Universal team. The Universal team unfortunately didn't change much and is not even used much anymore. Okay, so I don't really have much to supplement for the Universal team except that I moved Elf and uh, put Arian Rod in SS tier. Arian Rod is a pretty good hero to replace Wukong. Okay, she has removed Hide as well. So everything that Wukong can do, Arian Rod can also do and she can do decent damage, I mean more consistent damage because you know in a universal team you're not really focused on damage after all so if your team you know is lacking in the damage aspect and you want to go more tanky universal especially with Rudy, um, Judas and all that you can actually use Aaron Rod for some consistent damage and Elf when you build him out he's actually pretty good because I've seen people say that Elf sometimes wipes teams <laughs> because of his boom effect Okay, so that is one thing you can consider as well. And he also cleanses and gets his awakened skill very, very quickly. So that's one plus. But beyond that, you know, he's not seen anywhere else. I've also placed Isabella in the S tier because she is a universal hero. And I think, um, again, I think she is a decent hero. It's just that you will need the cleanse. But you know, if you pair her up with Elf, there could be a chance that you're gonna cleanse early as well. So you could get a tanky and debuff immune team. So that's one possible and theoretical way of thinking about it <laughs> okay and finally for the dev team there is also nothing much okay no there is a big thing that has changed and that is the addition of chip so chip has completely completely changed the whole game <laughs> ever since they brought back the yugo first um system chip has definitely made a comeback and especially with gideon you actually can have a three man offensive dev team this is still somewhat like offensive team based but without the buff blocker right so in this case you can actually have you can actually enjoy chip's passive whereby he will prevent revive and you know in a dev team you really don't want the enemy to revive and kill you again so once you have casted the dev they die and that's it for them so it's actually very very efficient and when this happened way back i think in early November this was quite a mind-blowing um, meta change and then people started to realize and you started to use chip a lot more and even more relevant now because of all the revive together with that so yes the dev team has been revived because of the system as well as because of Gideon's addition and then you can have also enjoy chips passive so, so this is a pretty strong dev team nothing else has changed as well I may have thought of putting Yonhi in the S tier. I think she could be viable in the S tier as well, but I know previously I mentioned why she was in the A tier. It's because in the past people were using Wukong for the buff block. So it, the dev team was actually more universally inclined, but at this point, I do not feel that it could be that way, especially when you have this system of you going first. Yonhi could be a potential hero to be put in the dev team as well. Okay, but currently, I think most people are still running the, f the main 5. Okay, So yep, that's about it for PvP. We'll move on to PvE. In PvE, nothing much has changed as well uh, because, you know, there's, there hasn't been much PvE. <laughs> okay, so um, the SS tier has remained the same. You have your 4 DPSs, or rather 5 DPSs. You have your 3 great support heroes, and you have your 3 farmers. Okay? For S tier, I have included Ace because I think he's really, really good. His skill set, again, he increases damage the enemies take by 50%. Okay, that alone allows you to maybe minimize the usage of Yuri or maybe just not even use Yuri at all. He also increases crit damage. So for our offensive May team, you do not really need Yuri in that sense because Ace can help to increase crit damage and also increase the damage enemies take, which is both of what Yuri can do. 
right? And furthermore, Ace is an offensive hero, so he fits in with Maze offensive typing very well and you can have a full-on offensive team with Red Grid herself as well boosting your offensive capabilities to a much higher level. So Ace does open up quite a number of possibilities of team comps, okay? Then we have Ariel. Now you, I'm sure you completely forgot about Ariel. <laughs> Mythical Awaker Ariel. And Ariel, um, I actually wanted to put her in the B tier. If you realize it, before that she was in the A tier. Right, she was in the A tier because she was actually decent for Castle Rush. But then I wanted to put her in the B tier because if you realize one of her skills, she is no longer gonna taunt the highest defense hero. And by the removal of that part of her skill, she becomes way more useless for Castle Rush. And that in that sense her utility does drop. However, when I was checking for Heavenly Stairs heroes, she was used as a DPS. So then I thought about it and yes, I think she is the fastest magic AoE user right now. Even more than Espada. Okay, Espada was previously used as the 5-man AoE DPS hero for Heavenly Stairs, but now Ariel has conveniently taken over that role. So Ariel, I put her still in the A tier. As with all the other potential Heavenly Stairs DPSs like Eve, Espada and Jave themselves, Okay, so I think she's still somewhat good in a competitive Heavenly Stairs situation, okay? Next up, we have Isabella in the B tier. Some people have told me that she's pretty useful for Guild Dungeon and I can understand why because firstly, she does have Formation Change Immunity. However, I did mention that her Formation Change Immunity could be bugged. Okay, so I'm not too sure if that's gonna really last the entire battle on the entire 3 minutes. Another thing is that she increases the status effect resist rate of all allies by 30%. So that's gonna be very very effective against all the 100% status effect casting from the guild dungeon enemies. Especially if you have uh, status resistance on your heroes. But I do not really see an avenue where that, that will come in handy because um, firstly, you can rely on your Revolution Jewels. You can also rely on your Formation Buffs to support your backline with 100% resistance. So I'm, I'm not too sure about Isabella's role at the current state, but I'll just put her in B tier because she probably will have some use. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not too sure at this point. If anything, I think she's bothering between B tier and C tier. Because again, she's a universal hero, so she won't really go well with all the compositions of magic and offensive. So uh, that's another reason why I don't see as much use for her, even though you know most people feel that she is decent for guild dungeon. And um, one change that I did was to shift Tara up and miss down from B tier. So I shift Tara up from C tier. I realized that Tara is actually one of the only heroes, if not the only hero that has buff duration reduction on her effect attack. And in that case, um, when you use her in certain situations in Heavenly Stairs, she can come in pretty clutch against those immortal heroes. Okay, I've tried her before. So I know that if you play it well, if you give it a lot of tries, and your RNG plays out right, she can be extremely useful and, and you can get a very fast timing with her. Miss is down because I just don't see her being used anymore at all, especially with Regin Lave reducing block rate much more efficiently. So, yep, she's down there. No one's gonna use her. <laughs> and finally, we have the most useless new hero for PvE and that is Aaron Rod. <laughs> I mean, you are really not gonna use her in PvE at all because of all that fixed damage that she is doing and she has no sort of support or ally buff at all so you're definitely not going to use her very very useless for PvE okay so that's all I have for this end of 2021 tier list video if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments and, and I will gladly gladly answer your queries and if you did find this video helpful do give it a like and subscribe to my channel Big shout out to my channel members Christopher, Gonzalo, Tom, Bilal, Fahas, Reggie and Yamaki for their support. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much and see you!